Life kids, we're so excited to worship with you this morning. Would you stand up and get ready to worship with us with words, with music, and with motions? Wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh. you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, oh. you are the peace in my troubled sea. It's Pastor Sean, and it's the week after Easter, and I am so excited that I get to teach you today. We're going to be talking about the fact that God comes to forgive us. Jesus is all about forgiving us. I want you to be able to learn today that you can trust Jesus, that he's your Savior, and he's your friend. I hope you've been working since Palm Sunday on your memory verse. It's from Matthew 28, 6, and it goes like this. He is not here. He has risen. I'm going to say it one more time. He is not here. 
He has risen. Matthew 28, verse 6. Today, our key passage that we're going to be talking through is John chapter 21. We're going to be in verses 15, 16, and 17. Maybe ask your parents or whoever's helping you to stop the video right here so that you can look it up in your Bible. John chapter 21, verses 15, 16, and 17. Here's an example where Jesus forgives one of his followers. His name is Peter. And he says this, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. See, here's what I want you to know is that God wants you to help and serve other people. But he wants you to know first that he loves you no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've experienced, even in those times that you've done things that don't bless, honor, and glorify Jesus. He wants you to know that you can follow him and come back to him even if you've drifted away from him. See, the whole point of this story is that Peter is scared because Jesus is going to die. And he's scared because other people recognize him as a follower of Jesus. And so three times he denies Jesus. And how do we deny Jesus in our life? When we dishonor our parents, when we don't do what God asks us to do, when we say hurtful or bad things about other people because we're angry or we're frustrated. And just like Peter, we feel shame and we feel sorry because we've done bad things. But let me encourage you that Peter, though he's done things that hurt Jesus and really honestly hurt himself, because that's sometimes what we do when we do bad things, he comes back to Jesus and Jesus doesn't scold him. He doesn't say, I hate you. He doesn't say, I don't love you. He doesn't say even that Peter's in trouble. He just asks him, Peter, do you love me? Now, let me ask you, kids, no matter how old you are that are watching right now, do you love Jesus? We don't always show that we love Jesus. And, and I want to give you an example. Sometimes we say we love Jesus, but bad things happen. We get frustrated at our parents and we talk back to them. Or we're asked to do something by our teacher at school and we get an attitude about it. Or a friend says something that hurts our heart and so we say something bad about them. And these things begin to happen and soon we find that there are things inside of us that we never expected to have. And the reality is that these things get so down into us that we don't know how to take them out. We start actually thinking that we are what's gotten into us. But Jesus came to forgive us. And when we receive Jesus, now Jesus can begin to pull these bad things out of us. He takes what's inside of us and he pulls it out so that we can be made like those bad things never even got into us. See, what he does here is he says, Peter, you're called to be a pastor. You're called to be a leader. That's my job. Now, you may not ever be a pastor. Hopefully, some of you kids end up being one. But here's the reality is that God has called you to be something, a good son a good daughter who brings light and life into his world with your actions, with your hands, with your thoughts, with your mind, and with your love, with your heart. 
And God can make you new again, even when bad stuff comes in, if you let Jesus forgive you. So I want to ask you, will you let Jesus forgive you? See, Jesus forgave Peter, and Jesus has forgiven you. All you have to do is say that you receive it. When he says, do you love me? You need to say, yes, God, Jesus, I love you and I want to live for you. Remember, last week we talked about Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead so that he could forgive the world of our sins. That's not just for Easter. That's for every single day. See, Jesus's mission was to bring forgiveness to me and forgiveness to you. So some of you might be thinking right now, you know what, I've actually done some of these bad things and they've gotten into me and I want them out of me. I don't want to think that I'm these things and I don't really want to do these things anymore. Well, you can say a simple prayer like this. Jesus, forgive me because you know that I love you. Thank you for forgiving my sins. In your name, I pray. Amen. Maybe you stop it, rewind, go back and listen to that prayer again. Anybody can say that prayer. And let me say this, Jesus can forgive anyone just like he forgave Peter. Let me remind you of the memory verse, okay? Your memory verse is this, Matthew 28, 6. He is not here, he is risen. He is not here, he is risen. And because he's risen, there's forgiveness for you every day. Let me pray for you. God, thank you that you've forgiven anyone who receives it from you. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us and that you resurrected and that you can forgive even the worst things that we've done, that you can take it out of us and make us new again. I pray that these young kids that are listening, these students, would know that you are for them and that you're with them, that you're not against them and that you love them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Bless you. It was good to hang out with you. And I can't wait to see you again. See you next time.